Cork. Okay, so I've gone back to my electric bass here, and here's where we're going to look at this control here, knee. And like I said, basically a, a hard knee means that it looks like a hard knee, right? It, 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 there's, a, there's a discrete angle right there at the threshold where, look at this graphical display here, as we soften that knee up, it kind of makes that more into a curve rather than a, just a, 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 a sharp angle. And so here's, here's how we can kind of experiment with this. Let's go to the very beginning here and let's see what kind of threshold we can set so that we don't get any gain reduction. Um, and I think it was around minus 18. So right at the beginning of the song, we're not getting any gain reduction at all. That's because this is a hard threshold. In other words, the detection side of the compressor is saying, okay, let me look at the signal. If you're above minus 18, you're going to get compressed. If you're below, I mean, if you're minus 18.1, I could care less about you, right? This is like a, a kind of a binary decision. It's either you above or you below, and I'm going to deal with you in that way. But as you can see with the knee, this is a much more nuanced kind of position. It's saying if you're below you are going to get compressed, but you're not going to get as compressed as hard as you would be if you're above that threshold. So what does that end up giving you? It gives you a, a, a kind of a more transparent compression. Let's test this by this example. We, we saw it right at the beginning. If we have a hard knee and everything is just uh, below that threshold, then we should see no gain reduction. We've already tested that, right? So therefore, if I crank this knee up and make that more of a curve, you would surmise that you would start seeing some compression, maybe not all that you would normally see over the minus uh, 18, but you'll start to see some of it, and let's test that. Sure enough, it's barely ticking over. I mean, it's like minus one to minus two, which is, you know, uh, almost in, imperceivable, but what it allows you to do is just give you a, just a more natural sound to your compression. Now, before we move on to gates, I'll quickly explain what a limiter is. In essence, a limiter is just really a compressor with a very high ratio. Some folks call anything over, say, 10 to 1, tend to call that limiting. So you might kind of say a compressor kind of morphs into a limiter as you crank up that ratio. Now there are also specialized limiters on the market in both hardware and software that can perform these harsh gain reductions with less distortion than you would normally get with regular uh, compressors. Now by the way, in terms of the detection side of a compressor or a limiter, there are basically two different ways to, to detect whether a signal has crossed over that threshold and in turn whether to tell the gain reduction side to start compressing. Uh, that signal. And those two are RMS and peak. RMS is just a fancy way of saying average level. If you're, I don't know, if you're really interested, it stands for root mean square, which is just um, kind of a geek way of, of averaging, taking the mean measurement, and then the root and the square. So you'll always get the correct math for both above and below the zero point, whatever. Okay, It's just the average level, okay? So, a peak measurement sees the peak of the signal, which is really important in limiting. You want to quickly pull down those peaks in limiting. So the rule of thumb is typically RMS is generally used in compression and peak detection is best used in limiting. So there you have it basically. These are the basic controls used in compressors and limiters. We'll look in much more detail when we get into routing and applications. but. This could, should kind of give you enough info to be able to stare down any compressor or limiter and understand kind of what all those uh, controls are.